Um, I have to think hard. Well, it, first of all, I like listening to Rush Limbaugh because I think he's very entertaining, and he is a master at his craft. I mean, but you take lots okay. of jabs at him in your well, book. Well, I do. But, and you, you call know, him a liar. I do. I do. <laughs> uh, and um, just, just. I, I also of... like so for various reasons. I like watching Glenn Beck because it's like watch for me. It's like watching a train wreck. I mean, I think Glenn Beck at any moment is going to fall down on the floor and cry, and people in white coats are going to come in and carry See, him now, off. See, now, I feel the same way about Ed Schultz. There's nothing more <laughs> repulsive okay. to me than watching Ed Schultz, but sometimes I have to watch the train wreck. And, in fact, you have included him in your book, and you say that he's a good broadcaster. Now, now he I, is somebody who deviates against everything see. you're saying that you would see? like to see on radio here. See, bias is in the eye of the beholder. Oh, really? The okay. The beholder. You now, talk, wait, wait, wait. You well, talk it's funny about... because I just came here to the studio from doing Ed Schultz's... <laughs> television show so <laughs> um, i did not know that <laughs> uh, I'm tr- so there are some around the country i think roger hedgecock in san diego does a good job okay uh, he, he's a, he's a, a smart talk which i like i i mean i again i really like good political debate okay I, the ones that i single out in the book mark levin glenn beck michael savage are not my favorites, Sean Hannity. That's why I talk about them. But these are the number one men that, uh, on all of radio. You're right. Number one, Rush Limbaugh with 20-plus million listeners. Sean Hannity, number two, is 16. Glenn Beck, number three, with nine-plus. And Savage Nation, Michael Savage, with nine-plus million as well. So so something is telling us about the market. But I have a little bone to pick in the uh, book about right. Ed Schultz because you, you, you say he's this well, honorable he, veteran Put it this way. He has more... He has more tele- radio stations than any of the rest of us. Okay, so but he's, he's also falling into the pattern of the hate mongering that you talk about disliking. He doesn't stick with the facts, and I'm going to play a little clip for you right now that's going to tell you just exactly why I don't like Ed Schultz. Do we have it here? All right, he's, he's queuing mm-hmm. it up. But he, mm. you, you distinctly say in the book that you're, you're not a proponent of calling names. You don't like people who generate anger and hatred in America. This is not what really this platform should be. But yet, we have some haters on the other side, Bill. And and here's one of them. I'm waiting. It's almost as if every one of these town hall meetings is turning into the Jerry Springer show. And there are many Americans right now who are starting to fear for the safety of the President of the United States. All over health care reform. Uh, Folks, these people are psycho. That's what they are. Uh, Sometimes I think they want Obama to get shot. I do. I really think that there are conservative broadcasters in this country who would love to see Obama taken out. They fear socialism. They fear Marxism. They fear that um, the United States of America won't be the United States of America anymore. Now, you tell me how that differs from Rush and then the hate mongering you say that you dislike in this book. Uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't defend that. OK, no. no. And I mean, I, uh, toxic talk. I don't like it from whether it's from the left or the right. But I would say and I'm congratulations. You found that clip. <laughs> it would have been a lot it easier. It didn't take much. It Let me tell you. It would have been a lot easier <laughs> to, the find, to find more <laughs> clips from Michael Savage or Glenn Beck or, or Rush Limbaugh uh, or, or the rest. Uh, and so I think Ed's over the line there. I got in trouble recently with my friends at CNN, former employers at CNN, because I called out one of their guys, Eric Erickson, who's a CNN contributor, for saying if a census worker walked up on his front porch, he'd take out his gun. I remember that. I mean, they came after me saying, how dare you identify him as a CNN contributor? And I said, wait a minute, because he is? (laughs) But I said, I don't care. They said, well, he's only on the air like twice a week. And I said, I don't care if he's on the air five times a week or none. He's a CNN. And I don't care if he works for CNN or five, whatever, wherever he worked for. I would say, I, I, I don't think talk radio hosts ought to be talking about pulling out a gun on a census worker. Right, right. So, uh, but I, I, I do think that uh, there's, it's, it's much more prevalent on the right than it is on the left. Okay, fair enough. And if you had a solution for a sweeping change in the broadcasting industry, what would it be? Would it be a change with the FCC for ownership to say, hey, we need to break up the ownership a little bit here, but please don't tell me it's the fairness doctrine. I don't no, think as that I said is. earlier, okay. it's not. Yeah. No, I think it's a couple of things. I think, one, it is that the FCC ought to, ought to have some new rules about ownership. I don't want to get too complicated here. No, that's but it's, fine. It, for these companies, they not only own this way, meaning – 
they'll come into a market, I can tell you, like Washington, D.C. They'll buy five stations. They own them all. So they, they don't care if one of them fails because they've got other stations that are doing well. But they also own this way, vertical, which means they own the programs. So they, what programs get on their stations? The programs they own. So I think the FCC should do a better job there. The other thing is I think liberals have to go out and do what the conservatives did. It's go to the market, buy stations, create their own networks. And finally, you know what? If people don't like that kind of talk, turn it off. You got it. All don't right. Listen. Well, thank you so much. Last word, right? Because you yep. said it earlier. That's right. Uh, t talk radio is not rocket science. Rocket science, okay? The number of listeners equals ratings equals, equals dollars. revenue. Yes, and that's the bottom line. So you turn off and the listeners. You do it. Our bottom line right now is that we We're have to out move of time. on. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for being Thanks, here Lisa. again. Bill Press, he is the You're author of Toxic Talk. Well, thank you, and, and I take that very seriously coming from a veteran like you. So it's congratulations just... on, on your show and, and making it to as many markets and, and all of us radio people here aspire to do what you're doing. So it's keep up the good work. It's worth getting up early for. And, right. and uh, you know, I have something nice to say that I just interviewed the director of a film for, and she said, you know, at the end of the day, you got to ask yourself, what do you stand for? So I know we don't stand on the same side of politics all the time, but I'm glad you're standing for what you believe in at the end we of every day. We stand for good talk radio. Yes, we do. All right. Thanks, <laughs> thanks. a lot, Phil. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And joining us on the line, I told, promised you a little bubble talk. No, not the kind you two, but yes, the bubbles that we've been talking about, that stemmed from Greece. And oh, that debt bubble that just kind of blew up in Europe. Everybody's talking about who's next to go and does it matter? And should we be worried more so about our own markets that have taken quite a substantial tumble? Here to join us is Fred Sheehan. He is the author of Pandora to Power, which is all about Alan Greenstein's play in the money game. Fred, welcome back to The Political Tick. Hi, Lisa. It's good to be back. Hi, hi. Thank you for coming back on the show. Now, the Dow suffered a 400-point loss last week, but that's despite popping up on Friday. We had a lot to worry about in the month of May, which didn't go so well because it dropped over 1,000 points. Is this just solely because of Europe, or is this just underlying fundamentals that are just crumbling? Yeah, it, 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 it certainly had to do with uh, Europe, but it also has to do with fundamentals. Um, you know, markets have been propped up by enormous uh, government spending, uh, which has put uh, a lot of money into the economy. And at 0% interest rates, it uh, puts people into assets such as stocks that uh, a lot of people shouldn't be in at this point. But um, uh, it, so it has overvalued um, a lot of the asset classes. Okay, let's talk about how far do you expect the Dow to plunge? Because obviously, since you're saying the fundamentals have problems too, you expect this to go further down, yes? I think so. Um, the, the problem is that um, at, at this point, um, th th these prices are pretty artificial. Um, you know, uh, the uh, Federal Reserve has uh, gotten itself into so many different markets um, that even if it's not involved in the stock market, um, it's still... Um, distort stock market prices. Um, there, there really effectively is not a real estate market in the country right now uh, because the uh, government is involved in um, so, much, so much of it in allowing uh, banks not to um, take um, houses back that um, people have stopped paying on. 